Welcome to the Fighting on Film podcast, the podcast all about classic and obscure war movies, from the Normandy landings to the days of chivalry and swords. If it's been captured on film, we're going to try and cover it. I'm Robbie of RM Military History. I'm Matthew Moss of Historical Firearms and the Armourer's Bench. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Fighting on Film. Uh, Today we're going to do something a little bit different with a slightly different format to shake things up again for the new year. Um, We're going to do Fighting on Film Show and Tell, where both of us discuss a film that we've watched recently. Um, It's not going to be the full sort of like breakdown that we do for a normal episode of FOF. Um, But what we'll do is we'll give a brief overview of what the film's about and discuss some of the interesting bits that we've seen in the film. And then later on, it's up to you guys whether we actually come back and do a full episode on either of these films. Yeah. So, uh, Robbie, shall I jump in and do mine first? And then do you want to do your second? Yeah, sure. It's, it's, it's Matt's idea. So I'm, I'm his guinea pig here. So if, if he goes first, then I'll, I'll know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, OK. So my pick is Blizzard of Souls, which is a Latvian movie that came out last year. Uh, it was released in the UK as The Rifleman. And it basically follows a young uh, Latvian who uh, joins the the uh, the Russian Imperial Army with his father, who is a former soldier, and it's sort of like he's alluded to be this sort of like legendary sniper. Right. Um, and it starts off um, at home, and his mother's murdered by invading Germans. So mm-hmm. it's kind of a kind of a uh, a classic sort of like war movie introduction like revenge against the germans i'm gonna go and sign yeah, up now it's, it's definitely yeah. driven by revenge and, and you know nationalistic pride etc um so yeah so the young man and his father join up and they go to the front show some of their training they go to the front and there's there's a number of like really beautifully shot sort of like night battles and patrols and just the fact that it's set on the eastern front alone of World War One makes it really interesting because yeah. I, how many how many Eastern Front war movies can can you think of like First World War ones? Not yeah, not, not many. Not Second World, not War. many off the top of my head. No, exactly. Like this is the this is the most recent one I've seen, and yeah. I can't really think of any others that take place entirely on the Eastern Front and you know like try and tell some of the story. Mm. So the film's apparently based on a on a book that was written by someone who fought in the war. A, a Latvian officer, um, and it's it's basically tells the story of of the young man's uh, experience of the war all the way through. Right, his father, spoilers, uh, is is killed, um, but he sort of like fights on himself, and then with the collapse of of, of Tsarist Russia and you know the rise of the the, the Bolsheviks, etc., he finds himself sort of like donning different caps so he goes from being an imperial russian soldier to being a bolshevik to then being a latvian nationalist and it sort of like jumps down to the the idea of how latvia came to be an independent sort of republic on their own before the soviet union sort of consumed them later on yeah and it's just a really interesting film to see how that it progresses and it's it's not there's there's no real well known actors in it, and indeed I think the the young guy who's the protagonist was was sort of like, mm. it's his first film, and it yeah well that can help a film though when you're watching it can't it because it can yeah because you're not beholden to think oh okay that is named actor's name here you know that's oh I'm watching Tom Hardy be a, a soldier it doesn't take you out yeah it doesn't take you out of the movie like it can yeah, yeah exactly. I don't know a lot about Latvia, sort of in the in the First World War, but to to sort of it's nice to know that their films being made showing like you know these states were independent states before the Soviet Union got hold of them. Um, so it's, it's quite it's nice to sort of hear that. Yeah, and this film was actually like Latvia's entry for the um, best international film at the Academy Awards. Oh wow, okay. So, yeah, that, so they that entered it... this up. I, I don't know how it did, but yeah, it's like they're 1917 then, I guess. Basically. And I think that's what's on a lot of the trailers. It's like Latvia's 1917. And I can see that. Oh, okay. It's sort of mm. like um, the, the cinematography of it, of it is, is actually really quite beautiful. It's actually shot really well. Right. And it's quite immersive. 
Mm. So I didn't. I sat down to watch it, and I didn't. I wasn't expecting much. And I said to you a, a couple of weeks ago when I watched, it, I was like, I'm going to watch this this Latvian movie, yeah, yeah. The Rifleman. I've just just spotted on online, and I'll let you know what I think of it. And I just thought, well, let's try it for this new um, sort of like format that we're going to give a go now and then, uh, and I'll tell you about it, and you can see what you think. Definitely. Um, but there's 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 a couple of really great scenes where there's a gas attack. And you've got men running around in panic Ooh. and they're trying to get their gas masks on and they're urinating on rags to help others. That so don't is, have is it gas 1915 masks. then it's set? Is it early or? Yeah, it's like 1915, 16, 17. Okay. So it's sort of, I it don't go, know the did, exact. Did it go through? It kind of does. It kind of does that thing where it sort of melds a few years. Right, okay. And it sort of transitions and flows. I get you. I and get you. There's a couple of like, there's a little bit of a love interest. Hmm. Um it shows him with his brother who also joins and is an officer. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it tells the story of his father who, you know, is a sniper and he's on, he's on the, the, um, mm. the front lines every day, goes out on his own and he's, he's carving in notches into his, into his, uh, his stock. Bit of a, fancies himself as a bit of a Vasily Zaitsev. Yeah. He's like a <laughs> Latvian Vasily Zaitsev about 30, 40 years early. <laughs> so no, is it, you said about a gas attack. I think it's nice. It, not nice. It's the wrong word, but, yeah, the gas attacks done well in a First World War film. It, I think, mm. it can really add some, it adds some like, it elevates it because I think it, you, you get that wrong. It can come for a bit hokey, but you, yes, you get it right, definitely. and it can be yeah. really visceral and and creepy. And I think it is like when I watched it, I thought, wow, this is actually like quite terrifying. And that that's something the film does quite well. Mm. So there's a there's a trench fighting scene, and you feel confined. You feel like you're moving and trying to like dodge bayonet thrusts and stuff oh, nice. when you're watching. Yeah. So that's that's that shows good cinematography, I think. But yeah, so that's that's um, that's my pick for this oh. this week. That sounds... And I just think uh, it might be an interesting film for us to, there any... to take a look at it more in depth. Is there any good alley tally in it? Yeah, there's a couple. There's some interesting uh, small arms and stuff in there. Everyone's got a nice. Um, 1891 Mosin Nagants. Yep. And there's a couple of nice, uh, the, the father actually, his sniper rifle is a Gewehr 98 with a scope. Right. Which he takes from a German. Okay. And, and which is quite cool. Nice they show it. Usually it's just like anachronistic, but it's nice yeah. that they show that if they did. So there's a, there's a few, a few nice little mm. bits of, of a valley kit in there as well. So that sounds like one for people's radar as well, even if we don't make a, an episode on it in the future. Yeah, I'd recommend it. I'd Definitely. recommend a look at it. It's um, Latvia's nineteen seventeen. After all, well, there you go. Got to be, got to be worth That's a try. For, you know that kind of that kind of comparison. That movie won a, a shed ton of Oscars, so it's high it praise. Is. So, your turn, Robbie. What have you watched recently, and, right. and think we should we should look at? So I, it was um, New Year's Eve and I was sitting there with me, my son, my little baby boy, and I was streaming through the telly thinking, what the hell could I watch? And I found Sea of Sand online um, and I thought, you know what, I've never heard of it. It Richard Attenborough on the poster and I thought, well, it's got Richard Ooh. Attenborough on the poster, so I will watch it. Um, yeah. And it's, I think it's the only long range desert group film that, was made or has been made to date. Mm. Um, so it's, it's a quite a simple plot. It, these LRDG guys, um, they're going from their base to this German fuel dump to knock it out. Um, and it's behind enemy lines. And it's just, it's a story of them from start to finish. Yeah. Um, it's quite simple really. Um, but there's this new officer and, and he's been put with them and he, he hasn't gone out on patrol before, but it's like volunteers. They're looking for volunteers. So you've got Richard Attenborough's character who's, like the, he drives one of the Chevy trucks um, mm. and he's, he's ex um, RTR and he always wears his beret like to the side. It's like, he's got this cool, quite a cool way of wearing his beret. Um, but so it's him. And then you, Ali Tally right there. Yeah, really Ali Tally actually. But the whole <laughs> movie's Ali Tally to be fair. So he's LRDG and there's so much kit in it. Um, and then you've got Michael Craig who plays the actual LRDG captain. Um, but this new, this new captain's never gone on a, a raid. So it's sort of, they have a bit of a conflict at the start because the officer's like, oh, do you always, do you always talk to your men like this? Do you always let your men talk to you like that? Sort of, he he's trying to be like a proper officer, but then he quickly realises that, you know, in the desert, doing a long range patrol, 
rules right. and regulations aren't really that mm. important. You know, they, obviously discipline is important anyway, but, you know, sort of you're all in it together because you're such a mm. small unit. So it's nice to see that. But it's just nice to see, um, like, the LRGD represented in a film. Um, and obviously I love, from when I was little, I used to really think that Chevy trucks with Vickers machine guns on were really, really cool. And and this movie does dish that up for you. Um, there's a lot of, like, Vickers gun action, Bren gun action. The only thing that annoyed me was that they all have Mark III Stens for some reason. Right, that's, young, that's not quite yeah, right. There's a Lee Enfield in there. Um, Lee Enfield Mark IV, which, number four, which isn't, mm, could or could possible. be, yeah. Much more likely than a Sten Mark III. I think, yeah, they all had Mark III Stens. And they even mm. refer to, like, oh, get the Sten. Give me a Sten gun. Get in with your Sten gun. It's a bit... It wears yeah. thin a bit. I'm like, oh, you could just got Thompsons. How hard would it have been? You know, yeah. even if it was the wrong type of Thompson, it took me out. So when's it set? Like 41? Yeah, like 40, 41, 42 ish, I think. Mm. I, don't, I don't think he ever really yeah. says. Definitely wouldn't have had Mark yeah. III's. Definitely not in the desert. I don't desert. think they ever had them. I think they're from No, I've they didn't. At. I don't think Sten's got there. Yeah. But then there's, there's this whole raid at the end of the film. And it, it sort of has a, it drags a little bit, I must admit. Um, mm. I, it didn't engage me the whole night. It's 97 minutes long, which isn't really that long. But it, I feel like I've seen it possibly yeah, years ago. It felt it felt a bit overly long in some places. But, but I don't I don't remember Richard Attenborough being in it. He's quite good in it. He's barely in it. I must admit, he mm. doesn't. He's not top. He's top billing, but he's not top billing. He's, uh, it's, so it's like a retrospective yeah, top billing. It's more about yeah. the. It's more about Michael Craig's character being like the sort of really died in the wall LR did you captain? So there's a bit. One of my favourite bits is. There's um there's they see a Messerschmitt flying over and the, there's this guy on the Vickers gun and he's like come on let's let's shoot him down come on give give the order to fire sir come on I'm ready and he's like you know yeah. cocking the Vickers and uh, the captain gets out a a German like cap and he puts it yeah. on and he waves at the 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 plane and you see yeah. the sh- shot of the 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 pilot and he waves back to him and flies off and the new officer's like. What I was lucky, you know, and the Rich Latimer goes, "Oh no, uh, Skipper's Skipper's used that one before, you know. Don't yeah. worry, he'll, he he would rather avoid a fight than than get into one." Yeah, you got to get to the objective. Yeah, before you know, you don't want to get stopped before the objective. But yeah, no, I mean, I I thought it was a fun fun little romp. You know, it was um, hmm. filmed on location in in Libya, so it, it's actually the plains of the the plains of the Libyan desert are actually the Libyan desert, so. It's always a positive yeah. when it's not in some random quarry. No, exactly. That was really nice. Um, no, it wasn't in a random quarry. Um, the only thing that let it down was, you know, the Germans have American half tracks and Bren guns and Sten guns. Um, this is a bit of a serial offender, this one. Ooh. Yeah. Not even MP40s. No, they got they got Mark III Stens as well. There must have oh, been a, no. there must have been a run on Sten guns um, that month. Um but yeah, I mean it I, I thought it was quite fun, you know. But yeah, I mean, hmm. Richard Attenborough, you know, it's... Don't know how Can't say no to that. No, exactly. Yeah. It's got a really cool poster with Michael Craig giving it some of the Vickers. Um, but yeah, I quite enjoyed it, actually. I'd, I'd seek it out if you've got a a spare hour or two to kill. It's not it's not the worst one we could ever see. Hmm. Well, there you go, guys. Um, the Rifleman and uh, Sea of Sand. So what year did Sea of Sand come out? Uh, 1958. Oh, there you go. Classic late 50s British yeah, war movie. There you go. So there we go. Um, there's the two films that we've watched recently that we wanted to briefly discuss and not go fully in depth with and see uh, if you guys had any interest in us covering those in a future full length episode of Fighting on Film. Let us know on our Twitter page at Fighting on Film. Yep. And uh, don't forget to like, rate, comment, review, or whatever else it is that your various outlets for the pod allow you to do. And uh, tune in again next time. And don't forget to check out our latest special episode, which came out earlier this week. We were joined by special guest Peter Caddick Adams to discuss his favourite war movie, Kelly's Heroes. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah, thanks for listening, guys. Thank you, and uh, Happy New Year again. Happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye.